Hello Linux fans and welcome to Linux Quest. Today we're going to take a look at Fedora 25 KDE. It's like an old friend dropped in to say hello. I first tried Fedora, oh, well over 12 years ago, and it was the one distribution I wanted to run so bad, but always had difficulty with my hardware and getting things set up. That was back in the days with Linux, where you could spend hours just getting your Wi-Fi driver set up properly. Well, we've come a long way. Now, most distributions, you install them, and things just work. And there are a lot of people who just take that for granted, but I... I hearken back to those days where it was a long process, lots of reading. You didn't have all of the information that you have today on the internet, and you certainly didn't have YouTube tutorials to step you through things. Move forward to today, and this is Fedora 25 running KDE. Now, I chose KDE specifically because I wanted to see how well the KDE Plasma desktop mated with Fedora. For me, it always felt like it was a natural fit uh, for KDE, KDE and Fedora, and that may have to do with the blue theming from both. Fedora has always had blue wallpapers and blue theming in place, as well as KDE on the Plasma side of things. Although they're getting away from the blues, that was their primary color. Uh, so from the looks department, those two seem to kind of match. Well, you'll see here, uh, this is what you see when you boot in. It's kind of a white panel here at the bottom with the Fedora logo for the launcher. And then they've got the, I'll call it default launcher here from, from KDE. We're going to switch some things up as I'm talking. Now, flash forward to today, and while Fedora loaded up on my system presented no hardware issues there are a few other issues and a few things I want to talk about relating to Fedora in general one of those is is that Fedora ships completely open source free software so you're not going to find any proprietary software pre-installed on Fedora nor will you find it within their default repositories so you're not going to be able to just go to the software center or the AUR for example uh, if there was such a thing in Fedora, and install Chrome. Also missing within Fedora will be your multimedia codecs, like MP3, DVD, things like that. However, there are a multitude of ways that you can access that within Fedora. It just takes a little more time to get things set up. So we're going to step through all of those, and I also want to talk about one of the problems, again, not with the Fedora OS itself primarily, more for issues like Discover within KDE. So we'll take a look at that as well. First of all, I want to change a few things up here. I just wanted you to get a look out of the box. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the more simple application menu. Actually, before that, in case you've never seen the application dashboard, let's go ahead and switch to that. And, you know, this works. Uh, for me, this is more for touch interface, but it is a nice, quick, easy way to access you know, everything in the software lineup. But again, for me, it's more for touch use. All right, so we'll go back in with right click, go to alternatives, and we're going to go to application menu. All right, so we've switched that up. Now I've got several themes and everything, but I'm just going to kind of leave it as it is for now, and we'll just step on through with the video. So, all right, first of all, let's talk about the bad and get that out of the way. Um, if we go down here to system, don't want to lose my place, within KDE now you have a program called Discover. And so Discover is the application center or the app store or whatever you want to call it for KDE. I've have had mixed results with Discover ever since it launched. I, you know, I don't think it's particularly pretty and smooth, and this is a, an earlier version. This is not the latest version, and we'll jump over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll take a look at the kernel and everything here in just a minute. But the issue with Discover is not that it doesn't work, it's just that when you use it and you go to close it out, it will not close out. So I'm going to click that again, no go. So I'm going to right click and hit close, no go, and we'll get a pop-up here to terminate it. So we're going to go ahead and terminate it, 
and we'll get a pop-up message just telling us that there were problems. It's been this way since I first installed. It would continue to be that way after the update, um, and so it's just been problematic from day one. Uh, but you don't need it. You don't have to use it. There are alternatives and ways to work around that. Next, let's just go over here to System, and I'll go to Info Center. Now, when I first installed, we had a much earlier kernel. I believe it was a 4.9 series of kernel. Um, had an update, a fairly large update, and now we're up to kernel 4.11. And the Plasma version is 5.9.5 not the latest. See, so here we go. Oops, Discover crashed. It's just for whatever reason here in 5.9, Discover is, is not where it needs to be. Now, if you were to look at 5.10 and things, you're going to see, I think, some improvement within Discover. So it is what it is. Anyway, just wanted you to see that this is not the latest plasma, but it is very, uh, fairly current. And then we've got a fairly current uh, kernel here as well at 4.11. So, how do you handle your software within Fedora? Well, if you don't want to use Discover, you also have an option for Apper. And while this works, it's certainly not elegant, and I have kind of discovered some issues with search, and the way I know it's not doing exactly what it needs to within search, and it could be user error, don't get me wrong, but the way that I know it's not doing exactly what it should do is because I also installed something that I highly recommend that you would install, and that's called Yum Extender. The reason I highly recommend that you install Yum Extender is, number one, the layout and the way you use it, it's fairly straightforward and simple to use and understand and easy to use. You've got search here and you just type in description of the package you're looking for and it'll pull up. But the other big big benefit of Yum Extender is that you can download RPMs and that is the package that's used within Fedora as well as OpenSUSE. So you can right click and open with Yum Package Installer to install your RPMs. Um, it does not work within Discover, but it certainly works well with YumX or Yum Extender. That's the other thing I want to talk about. So getting your software set up within Fedora is not always the easiest process. It's going to be a combination of using the terminal. Hey, that's pretty straightforward. But a lot of new Linux users are turned off by the terminal. They kind of shy away from the terminal. They like going into the software center, typing in a search, and installing from there. And I get that. But what you're going to find primarily with Fedora, if you haven't run it in some time, or you're not used to RPMs, is that it's going to be a combination of downloading or finding and downloading RPMs and using the terminal to install the software. Now there's you know, a decent sized repository, but a lot of what you're looking for, or what I was looking for and many others are looking for, are proprietary software. You're just simply not going to find it within Fedora. Things like Flash Player, MS Core Fonts. Now, there's one other uh, program that I want to talk about here, and I'm going to put links to all of this in the video notes, but there's one other program you definitely want to take a look at if you want to install and set up things easily within Fedora and you're after some proprietary software such as Codex, Google Chrome, and things like that. And that's from the folks here at the folkswithhats.org website. Very catchy, folkswithhats.org. And that would allow you to use what's called Fedi in Fedora. So we're going to take a look at Fedi um, and how easy that is to use basically giving you one-click access to a multitude of things that you just kind of find in other distributions through the software center. All right, so I've got to remember where Fetty is, so that's under System. So Fetty kind of looks like a software center or software manager, if you will. You've got various tabs here. Uh, apps, development tools, themes, tweaks, and utilities. Let's start with apps. So you're going to find things here again like Google Chrome, Handbrake, Hangouts, uh, Simple Note, Spotify, and Steam. So one-click 
install for all of these. Telegram, which I use. Here's Vivaldi. I know many of you use Vivaldi. And I've installed WPS Office. This is the latest version, and I'll get into that later why, but uh, some, some things there with WPS Office, either because of the update or because I'm running on Fedora, it's running super fast and better than I've ever seen it run on Fedora. Now that could be because it was recently updated. Anyway, thought I would throw that out there. Here's Viber. Uh, then under development tools, you got a long list here. If you're a developer, under themes, these are some themes that you won't typically find in the uh, Fedora repo. Here's the popular paper and Numix and Arc. Then you've got lots of tweaks here, better font rendering, uh, junk file cleanup, permissive SE Linux, things like that. And then some utilities, and here we go with Adobe Flash. I've got Pepper Flash installed. But here are your multimedia codecs and your Microsoft True Type Core fonts. So um, a, a nice lineup here. So I highly recommend if you're interested in giving the latest Fedora, you know, a spin, or reverse that, the latest Fedora spin a try, because KDE is a spin. Um, then you certainly want to install this and set it up. And again, I'll have the links for that for Fetty. So the other thing, and let's go back in. I shouldn't have closed out the browser. Uh, the other thing that you could use if you don't want Fetty just for your uh, codecs and things like that uh, is RPM Fusion. And I'll also put a link to this, and it'll step you through how to set it up. Um, so this is going to include non-free software that is not open source uh, which would be things like your again your codecs and things that are restricted because of the license that's in place with Fedora so once you've got those things set up be it RPM Fusion or Fetty it makes the job as well as YumX it makes the job of getting your additional software and codecs and things in place much easier now, for someone new, you're not going to know out of the gate without some research that these are tools that make the job easier. And so because of that, I'm not going to recommend Fedora really for someone brand new to Linux. I wouldn't say that's the first distro you need to jump into. What do I think about Fedora as a whole? Well, number one, just I guess I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Fedora. Like I said, I go back gosh, probably 12 years ago trying to really get this set up and running right on my hardware at the time and never was really successful and kind of moved on to other, I guess, easier distros. And uh, over time, you know, kind of would keep my eye on Fedora, but you don't hear about Fedora as much as you do, say, Ubuntu or some of the Arch-based distros like Manjaro. You know, it's just not in the news. Although it's got a huge following and tons of support from the Red Hat Enterprise side of things, it's kind of like OpenSUSE in that you just don't see a lot in the news about it. I, for one, am happy to have this set up and running quite well, I might add. KDE seems very fast. Um, and I also want to talk about Fedora from the aspect of it being bleeding edge. Uh, it's got a reputation for being bleeding edge, and rightfully so, because it is. Um, so like, for example, Wayland. Uh, was something that Fedora and, and the community team there were involved in, I think, way ahead of some of the other um, developers out there with their particular distributions. And for the most part, um, a lot of that technology and a lot of that support comes from, again, the enterprise side uh, you know, of Red Hat Enterprise. And I think because of that, you've got stability in place once you get past the bleeding edge part of it. So I've always heard or I've heard it said if you're going to use Fedora and you want to use the latest version, give it a month after the initial release so that they can go in and work out some of the bugs because of the bleeding edge aspect of it. So it's been a long time, well a long time, it's been a while since Fedora 25 was released and so I feel like you know I, I pulled in all the updates and I feel like I'm going to be running this or could run this as long as I wanted to and be very stable. So, um, you know, I said in the opening, it's like an old friend come by to visit. And that's really what it feels like for me. In fact, I had, I even pulled in some software or excuse me, some wallpapers from older versions of Fedora 
just kind of for nostalgia's sake. So there we go. Some of the older, that one's not really high res. Let's pull this one in here. Um, so it's been fun. Um, one other thing I'll mention too is their implementation of KDE. There's nothing major that they've done. There is a Fedora theme in place, which is what you see here. It's just kind of white and nothing special about it. But the other thing, um, as opposed to other distros with KDE, Fedora, they've added a lot of the K apps. So um, you've got K Mail, Contact, K Organizer, all that PIM stuff is all set up. Um, under multimedia, you had Amarok, uh, Dragon Player, K3B, Camoso, Kaden Live, I installed. Um, let's see here. Under graphics, you had Gwynview, Color Paint. It just seems to be under utilities, you're going to see K Notes, Cleopatra, so on and so, so forth here. Um, K Write. So more of the K apps than I expected. No big deal. You can uninstall what you're not going to use. It's just that it, I wasn't, I wasn't looking for that because the ISO size is uh, 1.3 gigs, not huge, um, but so kind of surprised to see that. Other than that, KDE has run very fast and smooth, and uh, kind of look forward to just digging in and theming things out a little bit and giving it a run for a while. So again, w would not recommend this for someone brand new to Linux, but uh, certainly it's been fun to try uh, and get set up without spending hours getting my Wi-Fi drivers to work uh, like in the good old days of Linux. So hope this has been fun for you or informative for you. And as always, thank you for watching.